Hello there. Oh, little uh, faux pas at the beginning, as always. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to this uh, Novation live stream with myself, Calc. And uh, yeah, we're going to have a bit of fun tonight, hopefully. Um, we're going to be taking a good look at, um, well, two of Novation's latest products, um, which I'm sure if you're here watching, you'll be aware of. They are the Circuit Tracks and the Circuit Rhythm. Um, and obviously, we've done quite a few live streams covering the uh, two um, uh, two devices separately. Of course, once uh, Circuit Tracks was released, we did a series of live streams for that. When Circuit Rhythm came along, we also did a series of, of live streams for uh, for Rhythm as well. And uh, uh, what we thought we'd do this time around is actually bring the two of them together. Um, because, of course, um, you know, individually, they're very powerful tools in their own right. They can be used totally standalone. Um, it's not necessary that you have both of them together. But actually, when you combine these two devices, um, it really opens up what I think of as a bit of a power combo, to be perfectly honest. So, um, yeah, so we're going to explore really kind of... Yeah, how we can use these two devices together, uh, some uh, some tips and tricks around, uh, you know, using them this way. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, well, let's, I guess, crack on. Um, so yeah, if we switch over to uh, this camera here, um, and uh, yeah, so basically, um, with the uh, circuit tracks and circuit rhythm, we'll just have a little bit of a moment just thinking about kind of how this is set up, because of course... Um, getting the two devices set up is, is pretty important stuff, really, I guess. Um, so how are these two things connected? Well, on both circuit tracks and circuit rhythm, we have both, uh, we have a MIDI in, a MIDI out and a MIDI through. 
And um, in this instance here, I'm using circuit tracks as kind of the master clock. This is the thing that's driving the circuit rhythm. It's providing the tempo. It's providing the, uh, yeah, the clock speed. It's also, you know, start and, starting and stopping both devices as well. And it's doing that by using um, a straightforward, simple MIDI connection. And I'm coming from the MIDI output here on the circuit tracks, and that's going directly to the MIDI input on the circuit rhythm. So that simple connection there is going to basically firm those two devices together and get them fully connected in terms of uh, speaking to each other. Now, the way that I'm going to use circuit tracks is I'm going to actually kind of use this as a central hub for controlling the room that I'm in. Now, if I switch to this camera, it might be a bit of a dodgy image here because this is actually coming from my iPhone. I've kind of run out of nice cameras for this, but uh, let's go over here. So, yeah, so this is kind of the space that I'm sitting at. And you can see, obviously, circuit tracks, circuit rhythm here, um, several different um, devices in front of me here. And then over here, I've got a whole load of synthesizers as well, SH-101. One, um, uh, base station two here as well and the trusty summit is set up also so basically the circuit tracks is going to be able to send midi signals across the room um, and it's basically by doing it this way i'm able to uh, yeah essentially control pretty much whatever i want in the space using circuit tracks for uh, polyphonic um, midi um, yeah midi control so how do I do that? Well, of course, we've got the MIDI out coming out and it's going directly to the circuit rhythms MIDI in. And that's, as I say, passing all the clock and all that important stuff. But I've also got a MIDI through set up here on the circuit rhythm. And that is actually connected essentially to the rest of the room. Um, and how does that work? Well, again, if I switch back to this uh, this dodgy uh, uh, camera here, I'm just going to show you something, a little bit of interest here. Now, it's just tucked away in the corner there under the SH-101. You can just about see these blue lights here. Now, that's basically a MIDI distribution center. And in a space like this, really, um, it's pretty useful for me to have essentially a device that is going to take MIDI and send it all over the place. However, if you've got MIDI in, out and through on your synthesizers, on your devices, you can easily do this um, without really needing a, a MIDI distribution um, a, a machine. Um, yeah, if you've got MIDI through, basically what happens is anything that comes into the MIDI input here is essentially repeated and is also sent through the device. Um, and that means really, you know, I can make a chain of MIDI uh, uh, instruments uh, together and kind of, yeah, connect everything up in that way. So that's quite a useful, um, uh, quite a useful thing really to bear in mind is the MIDI connections here. Now, obviously, we've got audio as well, and I want to be able to hear the circuit rhythm and I want to be able to hear the circuit tracks. Now, on both circuit tracks and circuit rhythm, of course, we have an audio input. And in the setup that I have here, I'm taking the audio out from circuit tracks and folding that into circuit rhythm. So my audio connections are coming out here and going into circuit rhythm here. And that means any sounds that the circuit tracks make. So if I go to my synth part here, um, oh, turn the volume up. <laughs> there we go, the uh, default sound. That is actually coming out of the circuit rhythm's volume. So if I turn down circuit rhythm, you can hear, obviously, that, that kills the sound. So the audio, oops, oh dear, we lost the camera there. Uh, I'm not quite sure <laughs> what's happened. Okay, we might have... Um, we might have a bit of a battery um, uh, issue, so uh, bear with me a second here. I'm going to just put it to the starting soon screen for a second while I just get a spare battery. Oh. Typical, isn't it, when you, um, you want to start something off? Let's see. How are we doing? There we go. I just need to get this tuned in a bit now. Okay. And there we go, I hope. Let's see what that shot looks like now. Okay, it just needs to zoom in a touch. Give me one, one more moment. 
There we go. <laughs> well, let's hope that the uh, that's the uh, only gremlin that we have this evening. <laughs> oh well, there we go. So that was um, a nice uh, a nice start there. So. Um, yeah. <laughs> what was I talking about? I was talking about audio uh, signals, signal routing. So, yeah. Um, sorry about that little diversion. But, yeah, basically, we've got audio coming out of circuit tracks going into circuit rhythm. And the reason I've done that is that basically we're going to explore a bit of resampling um, with circuit rhythm and um, basically taking what we're creating in circuit tracks and actually putting um, that into samples on circuit rhythm itself. Now, you may also notice I have two inputs going into circuit tracks here. And this is allowing me to basically um, choose the instrument uh, that I want in the space that I've got in the room. So, for example, a summit or my base station or the SH-101. I can send that audio directly into circuit tracks. So everything is basically going to get mixed together and come out of the circuit tracks here. And that can be really useful because, you know, we can add effects to our, our sound. So, for example, if I go to, uh, let's, let's just choose a fresh project here. I'm going to go to MIDI 2 and hopefully, yeah, I've got a, a sound here coming from the summit. So I'll just put a, a, put a nice chord on here so I can just hold that down and basically now I've got a ton of reverb on the preset itself but if I go to my um so it's just let's ooh, let's just take that off right let's just make a long gate here so we've got the summit coming through and what this allows me to do now is for example if I want to apply any of the side chain effects that we've got here I can do that I can just add side chain to my summit uh, track here of course, I'll need to put some uh, uh, triggers in there. Now, hopefully you can hear how the side chain is being affected here. You can just hear that sort of little bouncing around a bit. And um, so basically, yeah, I can essentially take the, uh, the signal um, from my mixer here and send that directly into the circuit tracks. And that's all being passed through the circuit rhythm. And of course, if I wanted to, I could actually sample that um, uh, 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 that summit um, sound into circuit rhythm and play around with it and treat it in, in various different ways. So that's a kind of a basic kind of uh, overview of how things are set up here. Oh, you'll see I've got a yellow cable plugged in here. Um, both circuit tracks and circuit rhythm also send out an analog clock. So if I hit play, uh, let's just mute off that um, that summit part. But you'll see, um, I don't know if you can see here, my uh, little clock module here, the Pamela's new workout, starts up and stops when I hit the play button here. So again, this is a really nice way for me to be able to integrate, essentially integrate uh, this kind of setup directly into this kind of modular and analog kind of uh, modular world as well. It's a really kind of nice... Um, a, a nice feature that we've got this analog clock on here. Anyway, let's um, take a look at a specific page um, on the uh, on the uh, um, circuit tracks for, for to start off with, and it's the setup page. And we can get to the setup page by pressing Shift. And just above the save button, it says setup, so we'll press that. And here we get to the setup page. In fact, we'll do it on both of them, on the rhythm and on the um, on the tracks. Now. This is a very colourful page, and there's a lot of stuff going on here. It might be a little over-facing at first, but um, basically, uh, the top two rows here represent the MIDI channels. And it's the same as well on the, on the circuit rhythm here. They represent the MIDI channels that things are, are talking to each other on. So, um, for example, synth 1 here is set to MIDI channel 1. Synth 2 is set to MIDI channel 2. That's fine. MIDI 1 here is set here, which is MIDI channel 6. Now, in this particular instance, MIDI channel 6 is actually going through a, a MIDI to CV converter and then going directly to my SH-101. So if I um, go to the... Um, yeah, if I come out of that and go to MIDI track 1, just make sure the volumes are up. Yep, they are. And now... Oops, pressed the wrong button. There we go. So there's... SH-101. Um, and as we saw before, if I want to go to my uh, um, summit, if I look here, MIDI 2 
is set to channel 15. That's the channel I've decided to keep the summit on. And again now, if I go back to that page, there's the summit. So, so basically, with these MIDI channels here, I can essentially say what I want to send uh, where. And it's, it's really quite, quite useful. So for example, um, I think, bear with me on this one, I think it is channel 11, which will be 9, 10, 11, yep, here, should be set to control a Juno 106, which is tucked away under the, um, under the desk behind me. Let's try that. Yep, that's the Juno. Brilliant. So all I've done there is I've just swapped from channel 15, which is what the summit is set to, to channel 11 for MIDI 2. And when we go to play MIDI 2, I have a Juno playing as well. And the great thing is I can hit play. Oh, let's unmute that. Okay, so it's a bit of a, a clamped down sound there from the Juno, but that's fine. So that's now sending the MIDI data to um, the Juno. But maybe at some point I want to change, even mid-track, and you can go into the settings page while circuit is running, and then just change the MIDI channel. And there we go. And that's taking that same chord there, and now sending it to the summit. Let's take it back to the uh, Juno. There we go. <laughs> Simple chord there, but never mind. I mean, that's the, uh, the whole point is really that we can explore what we're doing with these, uh, with these MIDI channels here. Um, for example, as well, MIDI 1 is set here to 6, which is the SH-101. If I set it to channel 4, oops, beg your pardon, let's press MIDI 1, hang on, let's press MIDI 1 to choose it, then choose channel 4, and now... That's now going to um, a no coast, I believe. And again, if I want to send it to the base station, that's set to MIDI channel 14, so we'll go to 14. Let's go back now. So basically, it's a really useful page, this one, because essentially it lets us set our MIDI channels to where we want them to be. Now, obviously, there's, um, there's MIDI channels here on circuit tracks, and this is really where I'm kind of focusing the MIDI side of things. We also have got MIDI outputs for each of the tracks here on circuit rhythm as well. Now, it's important to note there's quite a big distinction between the way that MIDI is implemented on circuit tracks and circuit rhythm. Circuit tracks has four polyphonic sequences. Um, we have two that are attached to a synthesizer already, and two that are simple, or not simple at all, but basically they are just MIDI tracks. They are just sequencer tracks for external stuff. We've also got our drum tracks here on circuit tracks as well. Um, but on circuit rhythm, we also have um, eight different tracks here. And we can send MIDI out of these device, uh, out of these tracks as well. But the MIDI on this is not polyphonic. This is monophonic. So circuit rhythm is less of a kind of a, a MIDI, an external MIDI device sequencer. Um, although you know, if you had eight mono synths, you could uh, <laughs> make a good fist of it with the um, with the eight tracks that we have here already. But you know, essentially they are kind of two different um, sort of approaches to dealing with MIDI. And that's really why I think the combination of these two devices can make quite a big difference there because, you know, we've got the circuit rhythm, which is really kind of, I mean, I'm, I use it m m quite a lot like a, like a drum sampler, essentially, you know, it's kind of like a drum machine, but obviously with nice kind of pitched and, and, and um, yeah, you, and loops and, and lots of lovely sample stuff. But if I'm doing any MIDI sequencing, I'll do most of that really on circuit tracks. So um, let's go back to the uh, settings page as well. So again, you know, on circuit rhythm, you can change the MIDI tracks, uh, uh, change the MIDI channels, I should say, per track here. But if we just move down um, on this page, you'll see we've got these five lights here. These five lights here are basically um, the clock speed. Now, what does that mean? Well, this is the analog clock. So this determines the speed of the output from the analog clock. So if I hit play again here now, Okay, let's just uh, shut up that Juno for a moment because we're just going to take a look here at the Pamela's new workouts. And I don't know, hopefully you can see it's flashing. Um, it's okay. Now, that's set to this clock speed here, which I can't quite remember which one it is. I think it might be um, 8 uh, PPQN, pulses per quarter note. But if I increase that to 24 pulses per quarter note, hopefully you can see now. <laughs> it might be a bit much for the uh, camera resolution, but... That's really sped up. 
Um, yeah, it's a bit difficult to see on the camera resolution, but that's really sped up the speed of the, um, yeah, of, of the clock. If I bring that down, you might see it start to, yeah, it's still quite fast. Down to eight, this is where it's actually set, so this is kind of locked in here. If I go down to this speed here, which is two, I think, or maybe one pulse per quarter now, I'm not quite sure, it goes really quite slow at this point. So this is basically saying how many, how many clock pulses in a quarter note, so, you know, a note that lasts four sixteenths, it's a quarter note, how many pulses are getting sent out? And that's, um, again, really useful for, for connecting into kind of the modular world. Now, underneath the clock as well, we've got these green lights, orange, purple, and blue lights here. And these essentially represent different uh, yeah, different modes for um, uh, for communicating. The green lights here represent MIDI in and MIDI out. The orange ones here are con uh, CC, controller change messages. Um, actually, on the circuit rhythm, if I press the button here, it says, it gives you a little readout, says controller change, CC, transmit, or not transmit. When it's red, it's not transmitting. When it's green, it's transmitting. Um, and basically that allows me to kind of root what I want out of these two devices. So I can say I want MIDI notes to go out to play the notes on the synthesizers. I also want controller messages to get sent out to control the parameters. Um, what do we have here? Well, we've got our um, program change and we can set that to receive and, um, and send. Now, in this instance, I'm sending program change from the circuit tracks and that's getting received into the circuit rhythm. And what does that mean? Well, basically, if we come back out and we go to the projects page, program change is essentially saying when I choose a project in circuit tracks, choose the project in circuit rhythm. So if I press this purple uh, button here and we'll switch up, there we go. You see, it's automatically changing both of devices at the same time. And again, if I want to maybe change to a different track, let's go to this one. So basically, it's going to keep everything nicely in sync and just allow me to move around. Essentially, I don't have to kind of just hit new project on both of these things at the same time. So it just connects the two devices together and allows the circuit tracks and the circuit rhythm to stay nicely tight and in sync with each other. And talking of sync, the last thing to look at on this page are these blue buttons at the end here, and these are the clock settings. Now, again, the button on the left here is clock receive, so that would expect a clock to come in. The button on the right here is clock um, send. And if we look here on my circuit rhythm, I'm set to receive the clock. CLR clock receive. And I press this one as well, CLT clock transmit. Um, and so basically, again, what that means is, is when I press the play button here, um, oh, hang on, let's see if I turned it off. Oh, I'm in the wrong page, that's what it is. <laughs> now, if I hit play, you'll see it plays here. When I press stop, it stops there as well. So basically, this um, kind of interconnection here, um, yeah, really just brings these two devices nicely in together. So that's really kind of... I suppose a good overview of the kind of the the connectivity the interconnectivity the way that we can get these two things working together and essentially behaving as one unit so yeah so that's a really quite a useful kind of page to kind of focus on it's a bit dry i guess it's a kind of a little bit uh, um yeah, it's a little bit kind of uh, a boring, if you like, it's the setup stuff. But it's all important stuff if you want to get these things working together. So, um, yeah, let's consider what we've actually faced with now at this point, because we are with circuit uh, tracks and circuit rhythm in front of us. As I said at the beginning, you know, both of these devices are very powerful and strong on their own. You know, I could use happily circuit tracks to make tracks sitting on the couch, in the studio, wherever, you know, I don't need rhythm to connect to it to be able to do, you know, to create music. And it's the same with rhythm. I can take rhythm and use, you know, the fact that this is a sampler um, uh, with, with quite a lot of power, actually, you know, so there's a lot of stuff that we can do with circuit rhythm and I can create whole tracks directly on this on its own as well. But when we bring them together, 
basically we've got a really kind of powerful combination, power combo of um, of sequencer and sampler. And essentially, I mean, you could think of this as a little bit like, um, uh, I suppose, like a mini DAW. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's essentially four tracks of polyphonic MIDI sequencing here. Oh, sure, we have our four drum tracks. Uh, these are sample-based as well, and they have, you know, quite a pared-back kind of set of sample controls. They're very usable, of course, you know, they're really great controls, even though there's only four of them. Um, and, you know, we can send samples into circuit tracks. But, of course, circuit rhythm deals with samples in a much more um, advanced way and give, offers you a lot more control over what you can do with the samples. So... You know, we've got our four sampler tracks here, the drum tracks, essentially. But really, if you're going to do some heavy duty sampling rather than just kind of drum hit sample, uh, a drum hit playing, um, then really circuit rhythm brings a lot to that. So we've got four polyphonic MIDI tracks and essentially 12 sampler tracks here. Four of them are a bit pared back, but eight of them are really powerful. So, um, yeah, so basically that's kind of what I'm faced with here now. And, um, you know, when we've got our circuit tracks connected into a room like this, as I've mentioned before, you know, I can really use these uh, these four tracks to, 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 to well, to, in a really powerful way to, get, to start creating music. Uh, one thing I should mention is that we have synth one and synth two, and they are connected to synth parts. So let's just turn these up. So if I press the keys here on synth one, I'm going to get you know, uh, sound from circuit tracks. The sound is coming from circuit tracks. Same on synth two. And I've got all my different presets. So I can choose what sound I want and I've got control over the synthesizer here as well with the macro controls on the top. Um, so yeah, I can in use these internally to control things, but equally, I can use them to control external devices. So once again, if I go to my setup page and synth one, let's say I want to control the summit with this one. So I know that's, that it's MIDI channel 15. So there we go. I've now moved synth one's MIDI channel to channel 15. And that means now on synth one, let's see if I got, oops, let's just double check I've got that running. Oh, it might be a bit low for that patch. Let's just bring down the volume. Yeah. So, synth one is... In fact, let me just change that preset on the synth. Uh, let's go for this one, yeah. So this is the summit. And if I bring the volume up for synth one, I'm going to have both the internal sound and the summit. So what that means is that, yeah, we've got our internal sounds, of course, in circuit tracks, but we also have a mixer page here. And if I don't want to use the internal sounds, if I want this to be a four track um, polyphonic sequencer for external devices, the devices I have around the room here, instead of just using the internal sounds, it will still work for that as well. The only thing you've got to remember is that you've got to... Um, if you don't want the internal sounds, you just have to bring them down here in the volume of the uh, of circuit tracks. So let's say, let's bring that back again. Let's put synth one onto track one and actually MIDI two, which was uh, set to the Juno, we'll set that back to the summit now. And again, MIDI two is now controlling my summit. And the other great thing about this as well is that I have preset controls. So, for example, I'm just going to initialize the patch here on, on the summit. So we get our basic sawtooth. And if I go to my preset page here, when I'm set to a MIDI track, um, I have a choice of eight different uh, MIDI templates that are created. And I know that I think that this first one here should be a mapping that I created um, within Novation Components to control my Summit synth. So let's just go back to the page. So there we go. So on this initialized patch, I've got control over my filter. 
Um, that's, you know, the filter that is coming directly from Summit, but I'm controlling it here. And I think I put some other strange things on here, for like, yeah. An oscillator <laughs> detune. And then maybe some effects here, some reverb. Maybe not. Oh, yeah. So this is a dedicated MIDI track, but I'm also able to control my external synths and that sort of thing using this. And again, pretty, pretty useful stuff. Um, and of course, these macros can be automated. So let's just go to a basic empty track. And once again, I'm just going to quickly record something in. Um, what projects are we on? Okay, let's go to this one. And I'm just going to, let's see what tempo, 120. So I'm going to go and just put a beat in quickly here. Okay, so I've got a beat running there. And now on my um, summit here, I'm just going to quickly record in. Uh, let's just... Okay, I'll just record that in. Oop. Right, played the wrong note. Let's remove that. Okay. So let's just take the LFO off it. Bit of reverb. And the point is, I'm going to hit record now and start to play with a filter. Hopefully you can hear there, the filter's actually recorded the movement. So very, uh, very nicely, we have the ability to be able to take control of external devices and controls um, and, and automate our, our basic controls over them. Now let's go to um, MIDI 1. What's this one set to again? So MIDI 1 is set to 14, which is the base station. Okay, this is good. So I'm going to go back to this page and get with something recorded in. Very basic stuff, but never mind. Now, I know that preset number eight here is set to the base station. And again, I can automate this. Well, we've got the release on this one and I can open that open open that over time okay so we've got some stuff going on it's not the best piece of music as always in these live streams that I've ever made but that's fine now, I'm going to go to my effects page here as well and now if I go to the white row here this is reverb so let's add some reverb to the uh, summit, which is coming in on in, uh, on this pot here, on input two. And maybe I want to add some side chain to this as well. So let's just put a kick drum down. We'll go to the side chain. And I'll apply the side chain trigger from drum one and apply this to both synths that are coming in. Go to that drum and tune it up. Let's just get rid of that. Let's get rid of the summit now. And let's go to the rhythm and let's put a bit of a beat in there. So. Hit record and just let's see what we Now, I think that the, um, the base station is a little loud, so I'm just going to bring it back it down on the volume here. Let's get some hi hats in there as well, just to get it nicely ticking over. There we go. Kick drum's a bit loud as well. There we go. That's that's starting to make some uh, sort of sense now. Now the other thing is as well. I've got my audio coming in here on the mixer page. If I press down, I get access to my pan controls. Now we've got the reverb on. Let's just take the reverb off. 
and I might be a bit difficult to hear on YouTube land, but then we can send this out to the left and right. And again, I can automate this as well. So so now I'm just automating the panning, sending it from the left-hand side to the right-hand side to just add a bit of movement to that sound. I think that's right. Yeah. Great. So, you know, we've seen how we can obviously use the circuit tracks here to control the external gear there. That's quite nice. Um, let's. What else can we think about doing? Okay, so, um, yeah, let's think about how we can start to use circuit tracks and circuit rhythm together for things like um, maybe a little bit of transitioning. So let's 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 bring back those horrific <laughs> sounding <laughs> music melody lines. Let's bring them back in. Okay, it'll do for now. Let's bring the reverb back in. Just wash it out a bit. Maybe I'll just use the master filter here. And yeah, come on, let's get another beat on there as well. We'll go for a bit. So we've got this nice thing going on. And um, basically, if I now go to my sample record page here on the circuit rhythm, here I'm set, if I remember correctly, I'm set to my sound bank page seven. And I've got some red sample slots here. And these red sample slots basically mean I've got space to record a sample um, into circuit rhythm. Now at the bottom of the uh, sample page here, I've got these different switches here. So this first one is the threshold. Uh, this one is the resampling switch. So I want them to be green. Now watch what happens if I press this one, which is the monitor switch. It's gonna stop any input monitoring through circuit rhythm. So if I bring that back in, I'm basically, this is like essentially a mute switch, if you like, for the circuit tracks at this point, because the audio is coming out here, going into the input here, and I need to monitor that input. Okay, I've also got a pad switch here as well. So if, if things are a bit too hot from circuit tracks, I can just pad it down by 12 dB, just bring the volume down. But for now, we'll keep it like this, and I'm gonna go to this sample slot here, and I'm gonna hit record, hopefully on time. And basically, I'm gonna basically capture everything that the circuit rhythm is dealing with in audio. So, when I hit record, um, I'm gonna take circuit tracks output, including the external synth stuff, feed that into circuit rhythm, and capture that as a sample. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So now I've basically taken everything that we're hearing and placed it into a single sample. Now why have I done that? Well basically now if I go to, if I just stop this and we go to a fresh project now, let's go to, let's see what's clear. We'll go to this one here. And if I go to track one, go all the way down to track seven. And now there is the track. Let's just bring the volume up on that a touch. Oh. Okay, so if I now hit play, and we can see here on circuit tracks, there's nothing playing. There's nothing in the sequencer here. In fact, I can turn that down. On circuit rhythm, I don't have anything else playing. That is essentially everything that we've just had in its own sample form. And what this means is I can do interesting things like, for example, if I go to sample mode, go to slice, and now I can go to the note mode and just kind of randomly put steps in here. Oh, why are we not getting sound there? Let's see. Yeah, we're on slice mode. Interesting. Let's change the samples. Oh, I know what's happening my default sample for this track is not set to the sample we're using. It's set to, uh, on page one of the samples, it's set to a kick drum, but we actually want it to be this page. So I'm just gonna tap that. So now we've got the, um, so now we've got the uh, 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 
yeah, the, the, the sample in there, and I've split that up into different sections. Let's go to our 16th. And now, of course, I can start to bring extra stuff in here. Let's go to another sample. Let's go down here, maybe bring in a bass out. Now I can go to my synth parts here and let's uh, bring something else in, maybe from the summit. Let's get a different sound from summit. Summit 15, yeah. No sound from Summit. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Ah, circuit tracks volume is turned down. There's always an answer, isn't there? So basically, yeah, you can see what we've done there. We've basically taken a resample of everything and then started to carry on and play around with that. Now, this can be really useful for a number of reasons. So let's forget everything we've just done. We'll not bother saving that. I'm going to go to this track here. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to hit play for this. There we go. So we've got this kind of nice thing running. And I need to set my MIDI 1 to channel 4 for the no coast. MIDI 2, yep, that's good. That's on the summit. So I'll bring these parts in now. Oh, filter's on. There we go. So we've got this thing running. And now I'm going to do a little bit of breaking down. So we'll just go to these parts. There we go. Nice thing going on. Come to my sample record page. I'll clear out that sample that we just created. We don't need that for now. And now I'm going to hit record again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four, three. So I'm counting in my head. Four, two, three, four. Okay. So we've now, again, recorded everything going into the circuit rhythm, including the internal sounds here. Now, the reason I'm going to do this is I'm going to move to this next track here. And what we should find is that things carry on as normal. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> and of course they didn't. And why didn't it do that? Because, yeah, I didn't have got, I've messed around with my save page. Right, there we go. Yeah, so a thing to note, actually, in the setup page, you can toggle the shift to be a sticky shift or to just act as a normal shift. What does that mean? Well, basically, if it's on sticky shift, now it holds and I can kind of move to my shift pages here. Um, like so. Let's take sticky shift off. Oop, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, it can be a little thing. So let's go to setup page, take sticky shift off. I always keep it off. Let's go back and now I press it. And when I release it, we go back to normal. That's what we want. Okay, so what happened there was when I changed the project, sticky shift was on and it immediately jumped to the project. Um, what should have happened is it should have queued and it should have waited until the right beat and we should have got there in time. So let's try that again. So, now when I hit this button, after, on the fourth bar, right, it's queuing, and there's that sample that we had. So there we go. And now I can start to use this as a little transition between the two different tracks that we created. So. to the track one here. I think I'll use the high pass filter just to kind of fade this out for us. So. 
So basically what we've done there is taken um, a sample of everything that's going on and moved to another track that had an interesting thing set up. Let me just talk about that for a second. Um, so let's just go back to the project, this one here. Now you see on track one, I have a step here. And if I look at which sample that is, okay, I just bank down here and you'll see when I get to page seven, it's this sample that I'm using. So what does that mean? In the sample record page, that's this sample. This is page seven and that's this sample. And if I clear that out, okay, there is no sample. So now if we listen, there's a step there, but we can't hear anything. And that's literally because there's no material recorded to that step. So let's just do this once again. Let's go back to this track here. And let's just do that breakdown thing that we were trying. That'll do. Sample record. I'm gonna hit record in time and capture it, so here we go. There we go, that was four bars. Now, let's go back to our project page, and if you remember, this next project here is gonna to move to um, that track, and we've just placed the sample that that track one is gonna play. So let's just move, do that move now, and we'll see what happens. One, two, three, four. There it is. And I could just boost that with a touch of the distortion there. And now I'm free to kind of carry on, as I say, and start to build on that. So we've got here. And now I can go back to, uh, yeah, this MIDI one track here and then let's find the right. There we go, and I'll just record something in. that track and bring up some extra notes in. And you can kind of hear this kind of weird little clanky kind of sound and that's because the No Coast is very much a mono synth. It can't really deal with two uh, sounds at the same time, two notes at the same time. But we can do some interesting things with other synthesizers like this. So for example, let's move MIDI 1 to the uh, SH-101 over here and that's on MIDI 6. You get this kind of nice little uh, uh, sort of plinky sound from that. Well, again, we'll bring some reverb on that. Um, and yeah, let's go to this track here. I think on this sound here. Okay, so we've got some nice little transition thing going on. Now, I'm going to go to my grid effects page here on Circuit Rhythm, and of course, the grid effects essentially will apply to everything that's coming out of Rhythm, but also any internal, any external stuff coming in as well. So maybe if I want to add some uh, um, gator to this, I can do so, change the time around. And the, all these effects can drastically change the way things sound. Now we're on to the reverser. And when we're happy, we can just switch this out. 
So the grid effects are great, a great kind of way to get nice rhythmic effects stuff going on with, um, yeah, with anything that's coming, passing through circuit rhythm. So all the circuit track stuff is coming out through the effects. Now, now the grid effects here, of course, these are set up again in Novation Components. Um, and essentially you can kind of define what these effects are. So if we just hit play again, I've got a beat repeat here. So you can kind of, you know, do that. We've got a, a digitizer sound here, lo-fi sound. Sample reduction. We've got this reverser. I love the reverser, it gets nice and psychedelic. Different rates for that as well. We've got the gator. Now, basically, these are just switches that instigate a kind of um, a setting, a preset, if you like, for the effect, which is great. It's really useful and performable. Um, but the circuit rhythm also allows you to take full control over all of the parameters that each of these effects have. So, and also I can do this from a, uh, from a totally different page. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, basically, let's just start this off again. Actually, no, I won't. What I'll do is I'll just quickly shift to this camera here. And you hopefully can see, here is a Launch Control XL. Um, this is a really uh, lovely uh, uh, controller, of course, by Novation. But this is, you know, it's, it's kind of standard what it does. It sends out CC messages. And any kind of um, device that sends out a CC message or can be, you know, used to set up the CC message that you want, um, you can, uh, yeah, you, you can use. Um, I'm using a Launch Control XL here. This is really nice because I've got 24 pots here. I've got eight faders and 16 buttons. And what this means is I now can actually set this up to give me full controls over the grid effects within the circuit rhythm. Now... Just a little point, we're talking about kind of MIDI routing at the very beginning. The Launch Control XL was designed kind of way before the, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, the, the uh, kind of hardware, the doorless jamming kind of uh, approach um, or renaissance, shall we say, of, of making music. So this is essentially, this is a USB device. Once again, you know, as I mentioned before, I've got over, if I go to the crappy camera uh, over here, yeah, up in the corner, I've got my MIDI distribution machine, the MRCC, really, really nice thing. Um, and I'm sending a USB from the Launch Control XL over there, and I'm actually routing that MIDI back out into the circuit rhythm. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously you do need, if you've got a USB controller only, you're gonna need to have something like, well, I've got one of these things here. This is a, a Kenton uh, MIDI host. Um, it's got USB in and then it's got MIDI in and out here. So I can plug in a Launch Control XL here and it'll spit out actual MIDI if I want it to. Um, so that's, um, yeah, that's that's a kind of a, a, a pretty useful little box. I mean, obviously the, the device I've got over in the corner there kind of takes care of all that with me for me as well. And also I need to get MIDI into the circuit rhythm. Well, I'm already using MIDI in here from the circuit tracks. So how do I kind of combine different MIDI uh, signals together? There's only one MIDI input on here, but if I've got two MIDI outputs that I need to feed here to MIDI input, um, I'm gonna need something like this. This is a MIDI merge. Um, and this MIDI merge here is basically, let me plug in four different MIDI connections, four different outputs from different things going to MIDI inputs here. That'll merge them all together and send it out of one output here. So again, this is really useful for combining um, MIDI signals and that sort of thing. So if you are wanting to use a USB type of control surface, you know, you may have to consider that sort of stuff. But anyway, here I've got the Launch Control XL. Let's just fire off that track again. Now on here, I set it up so that I've got um, momentary switches on the bottom. So I think that the gator is this one. Oh no, that's the reverser. There's the uh, gator and it'll be on for as long as I press the button. And I also have now control over the speed. 
of course, up into, I think, uh, 30 second triplets, really quite fast for it. If I want to just turn it on and keep it permanently turned on, I can just hit on here. I think the fader does the same thing as well, that's the speed there. There's a triplet sound. And again, I can just tap the momentary just to switch it off. Now, one thing that I really love about um, the grid effects here is the auto filter. It's a really lovely sounding filter, I think. So let's just uh, stop it on here. And my green uh, controls here are essentially my um, filter. So if I turn it on, and I can take the LFO off, yeah. Now I've got a filter here. I mean, it's a bit like the master filter here, but it's secondary to that. And I can choose to band pass. Get some resonance on there. Go to high pass. Or go back to low. So it just opens up a lot more control. Again, the, the, um, the lo-fi effect. Of course, all of this stuff is going on, so I can go to my sample record page here and choose a sample slot here, and I'll just get ready to record this in. <laughs> Sounds gnarly, but anyway, let's turn those off. And now I've basically captured all the kind of the effect stuff that I was doing into circuit rhythm. So let's just mute stuff off. And go to track seven, where there's nothing on there. Go to this sample here. Of course, the uh, circuit tracks here is still running around. Oh, let's see. Oh, muted it. <laughs> and once again, I can go to my sample mode, say, let's go to Slice. And in, yeah, Slice mode. So maybe, you know, obviously, this is obviously just a little example of what we can do there. So, um... Yeah, so it's pretty useful to have this um, this type of controller really alongside something like Circuit Rhythm just to add an extra dimension to those grid effects that you've got. Um, we're going to finish up pretty soon, um, but I'm going to just... Oh, yeah, I'm going to just show another great thing that I, I kind of stumbled across today and I was sort of thinking about what we'd be talking about tonight. And, um, yeah, so let's go to a fresh project again. Let's go to this one. Oh, no, that one's something on there, isn't it? Let's see. Yeah, this one is clear. Okay, great. Now, what I loved, what I found out today is, obviously, you know, we've got the resampling capabilities of Circuit Rhythm, which is brilliant. Um, I'm going to just double check. Yeah, I'm set here on MIDI track one, uh, MIDI one, sorry, on the Circuit Tracks two, to play my um, SH-101. Great. So... Um, the SH-101 is an, a super old analog CV controlled only um, mono synth. It only can play a single note at one time. Um, but it'd be lovely if I could make sort of poly chords from it. So I'm going to let's just get a beat down first of all. Um, I'm just going to choose random sample. That'll do. There we go. That'll do. So on my uh, circuit tracks, I'm going to sequence um, the SH-101. Great. Now, let's go to our sample record. Those samples that I created before, don't need those. Let's get rid of those. And I also don't need resampling for this. I'm just going to take 
the, um, the, the synth sound, which is coming in here into circuit tracks. Just going to record that. So, one, two, three, four. There we go. So, I've recorded the SH-101 into a sample slot. Now, let's go to this uh, track two here, part page seven, where I should have this one. Now I have two SH-101s playing the same line, which is great because if I then say, okay, let's just detune the one on the circuit rhythm and such, you can just start to thicken that up nicely in kind of a, kind of a poly, you know, multi-oscillator kind of way. But let's just bring it back. That's fine. Now I'm going to go to my scales mode here. And I'm going to just transpose it up a fifth. Go to my sample record page. I'm going to choose a new slot now. And I'm now going to turn back on the resample. And I'm going to need to mute out the drums to do this because I don't want the drums to um, get re recorded as well. So let's just take that out. That's fine. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So now I've got both SH-101s captured on this next track. So let's just change it to that. Let's just mute out everything from the circuit tracks here. You can hear I've got my two notes. So let's go back to this one. And maybe on the, let's put it up an octave. Gonna maybe add some extra notes to this now. Let's go. Let's. <laughs> That'll do. Um, and yeah, go back to sample record. Go to this slot here. And when I'm happy, I'm going to record that in as well. See, that's a, add a bit of reverb to it this time. Maybe touch a delay. And then when I'm happy, hit record. One, two, three, four. Now, we'll probably get a bit of a cut off of that delay sound, but if I now change the... Oh, this one, isn't it? Now, if I change the step to this sample so now we've got three SH-101s very quickly kind of doing polyphonic stuff so let's bring a uh, the beat back in and I'll just add some extra stuff in here as well So I can go back to my uh, SH-101 here and just record something new in, so... Let's get it at the right pitch. And maybe we'll bring in a bit of uh, Summit as well. two octaves keyboard to play and on the patterns page here by the way everything that we've done tonight has just been one single pattern so let's just bring in four patterns for the uh, summit and we'll just hit record and
little bit of uh, gator. Let's uh, get the uh, <laughs> let's get the beat repeat on and the reverser. Anyway, there we go, just having a bit of a noodle around now. So, I think I'm going to finish up for the night now. Well, it's night time over here. And, yeah. So, I hope it's been an interesting approach to just kind of how you can look at, you know, using circuit tracks and circuit rhythm together. I think the combination of both of these devices really kind of becomes a bit more than the sum of its parts, to be honest. Because if all of a sudden you've got these wonderful ways of being able to kind of do transitions and all that sort of stuff, um, and yeah. I mean, for example, let's just try it one last time. If I go back to my sample record page. Oh, I'm using all those samples, aren't I? Okay, yeah, I won't do that. I was going to uh, try and transition back to that thing again, but I remember I've got something recorded in on Actually, no, let's clear that. We don't need that. There we go, of course. So, we can choose that part. So, I've created that sample again. And once again, once that save is made, we can go back to our projects here. And if you remember, this one here is the one that we transitioned to before. I can transition to this from anywhere. So let's go to that part now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> and it didn't it. Oh, yeah. Now there it is. And then, of course, I can bring that other stuff back in again. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, as I say, I'm going to finish up right now. Oh, <laughs> you just watched my head down, I didn't, instead of the, uh, the circuits. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, never mind. We'll, um, we'll finish off now. Hope it's been an interesting um, uh, uh, live stream for you guys. Uh, giving you some ideas to just try and explore various different things. Um, I should say, uh, just have a quick look at the chat just to see if there's anything that sticks out there um, that I should perhaps answer. Lots of people talking about Mini Nova and Ultra Nova, great stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, it should, I should say really that the, uh, the synth engine that we have in Circuit Tracks is, of course, um, is taken from the Mini Nova. Uh, is the uh, Mini Nova, it's a two oscillator version of the Mini Nova synthesizer engine. And of course, you've got a very powerful um, set of controls for that. It's a very capable synthesizer. Um, okay. Okay, there's one question here at the bottom. I should see I think I can answer. What is the max number of notes per trig in the sequencer? So for the MIDI sequencer, it's eight track, uh, eight notes. Eight note polyphonic. Um, obviously on the circuit rhythm, it's a single note. It's not polyphonic, it's monophonic. But you can hear, you know, if we just take everything out. Oops. Oh, let's try that again. There we go. We're just listening to one note now, even though it's everything. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the um, the synth and the MIDI tracks are eight note polyphonic. Uh, yeah. Is there a way to switch 32 steps across multiple patterns? Oh, okay. So, I, if I understand this, this is a question from Joel Raid. If there's a way to switch 32 steps across patches, well, this is kind of what I would do as, as, as you know, what I would do. So basically, yeah, I guess you're referring to the fact we've got this, this switch here, which means we've got, generally, we've got 16 steps in a pattern. One pattern, well, we have eight patterns in total um, in one project, and we have uh, 64 projects. It's a lot, <laughs> a lot of real estate in here, I have to say. Um, 
And one pattern can either be set to 16 steps, or if I switch here, it could be 32 steps. And now you'll see this kind of, oh, hang on, wrong camera, silly me. Right, let's try that again. So we've got a pattern here. Now let's just clear that pattern. So here we have a pattern, it is 16 steps. We have eight patterns that we can use and we can basically, we can chain patterns together. So I can make it four times 16 steps here. Or if I go back to this first pattern, I have this switch which will turn it from being just 16 steps into being 32 steps. And now you should see hopefully that this will alternate between orange and blue. And that now represents the fact that I have 32 steps in this one pattern. And I'm guessing from Joel's question, is there a way to do that on multiple patterns at the same time? Well, the answer to that is no. However, there is a great workaround. So um, if you press duplicate, you can duplicate this pattern. So it goes green. That's what it's now say. It's, it's copied, if you like. We need to paste it. So if I paste it here, here, and here, what I've done is I've taken the set, that pattern is empty, but I've taken it with its settings, you know, this 32 steps here, and I've copied it across these four. So if I now press shift in this, oh, I don't even, even need to press shift, I can just press those four. Now I have four 32 step patterns chained together. And yeah, so obviously that is kind of, that, that's gonna be twice as long as it would have been otherwise. So. Yeah, and that, that goes for the pattern settings as well. And the pattern settings, I think, is a bit of a secret weapon on circuit. The pattern settings allow you to change the speed of the pattern, the resolution of the pattern. So if I go down here, once it's gone through its, its paces, you'll see now it's half the speed, which means that 32 steps, which would have equated to two bars, now equates to four bars. And if I go down here, it now will basically become eight bars in length. And you might think, oh, okay, well, that's nice, but you lose a lot of the resolution there in terms of the steps. One pattern at this point is now eight bars. But we have our record quantize switch here, which allows us to go into a deeper level. Each bit behind each of these steps here, these 16th steps, we have six um, micro steps, which is basically running at the same as the maximum clock speed on here 24 pulses per quarter notes um, and that gives us a lot of resolution and of course if we slow down the pattern to being a quarter speed but we turn record quantize off we can you know have multiple notes on one step and get lots of uh, um, yeah get lots of uh, stuff together on that right uh, yeah so anyway, right, I think I'm going to finish up now. Oh, uh, yeah, James T. Kirk, which is an, a superb name, by the way. I spotted that earlier. Um, that's fantastic. Um, love to have 32 scenes, not just 16. Well, I, um, yeah, I mean, I kind of hear what you're saying. On the on the circuit tracks and on circuit, uh, on the on circuit rhythm, we've got these things called scenes, and scenes are basically groups of patterns. So I can set up chains and groups of patterns and instantly kind of jump between them or even cue them up so that it'll act like an, an arrangement a song mode um and uh yeah so basically you know you can use this as a kind of a basic arrangement system and we've got it on both of the systems as i say um and uh, if you want 32 of them i'm afraid we're gonna have to think about using projects but there are 64 projects on here um I've been talking to you for an hour. I've not been playing music totally for an hour, but I think I've used something like three projects in total. And there are 64 of them on here. So at that point, I guess the question is, well, you know, you can start to use additional projects and start to build those up together. And once you've done that, then, you know, you if you double up the amount of, of projects based around one track, then essentially you've got 32 scenes there. So, okay. Right, anyway, <laughs> I think, as I say, it's time for me to, uh, well, to go check in with what the heck's going on over at Superbooth. Um, as, we're, as we're doing this live stream, it's Superbooth over in Berlin. It's the first time I've not been, and uh, <laughs> I thought I'd spend the time with you instead. No, it's, uh, um, I'm quite excited to see what's been going on over there. But uh, for now, uh, we're going to finish up. Thank you very much for joining me on this uh, live stream covering 
both circuit tracks and circuit rhythm are uh, being used together. Hope it's been of interest, and um, yeah, hope to see you next time. Okay, 